Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this Friday morning edition of The Game Plan here at VerifiedInvesting.com. My name is Gareth Soloway, as always, uh, Chief Market Strategist here at Verified Investing. All right, so we have a lot to discuss today. Obviously, the markets have had a couple up days. We saw Bitcoin surge back a couple days ago, pull back just a little bit. Gold's actually struggling just a tiny bit as well. We have a lot to discuss, so I don't want to waste any more time. Let's get into it. <laughs> I always, by the way, folks, I always love doing that because I got my man Tim over here behind the camera and he has to catch that. And so one day you'll see me really give it a real world. We'll have to get a camera and watch you die for that. But all right, let's get into it, guys. Uh, number one, and you can see we're having some fun here on a Friday. So what I want to do, and before we get into the drawing, obviously, we're going to do a drawing here for the winner from yesterday, and we'll spin the wheel again. So we'll do that in just a second. But before we do that, let's go into the key headlines. We have four key headlines today that are moving things in the markets. Number one, Tesla falls pre-market after the company uh, says car output or cuts car output in China uh, because of a slump in EV sales. So again, basically what this is telling you is that EV sales have slowed so much that Tesla is finding they don't have to produce as many electric vehicles in China because they're just not selling. And again, sure enough, pre-market, we are seeing Tesla's stock come down. You can see there's technical support levels. We'll go over these on the chart in just one second so you can understand how I arrived at these levels. Next step, ne next up, we have FedEx pops 11% on earnings as the company reported better than expected earnings and approved a $5 billion stock buyback. Now, stock buybacks, for what you guys, you know, maybe you guys don't understand what those are. Essentially, it's the company buying back shares. And when you buy back shares, it essentially, the, the company buys the shares using $5 billion in this case, and then they basically make them vanish, meaning that there's less shares in the company. And that's what, one of the, one of the reasons I call it financial engineering is because if you have 10 shares in a company, right, just let's, let's do a simple math question here. 10 shares in a company and the company makes $10, that's $1 per share. If the company buys half of those shares back, you only have five shares left. If the company just makes the same amount of money, $10, right, then you now are making $2 per share. So it's a way to not necessarily increase your earnings but still your valuation looks a lot more attractive and you look a lot better because you're making more money per share. Now, this was one of the big things we've seen really take over Wall Street. In fact, in, in the government, there's a lot of questions on whether or not this should be allowed or how it's done because basically what it does is a lot of these CEOs that make 50 million a year, 100 million a year, it just makes them look good without them actually having to do a whole lot in addition to grow the company. So again, you see pay increases because the company company's doing better and the stock keeps going up because, again, valuations being cut down by the share buybacks, but the company is not really doing better. And again, that's why I call it financial engineering. All right, Nike stock falls 6% after warning its revenue growth would sink to single digits in the first half of 2025. This warrants an alert on the consumer. So you guys know every time I see something like this, I'm letting you guys know there's something going on here. We have to watch the consumer so closely in the U.S. at least. And the reason I say that is because the backbone of the U.S. economy for decades has been consumer spending. We know credit card debt over a trillion dollars. Auto loans, crazy just increase. Default rates starting to rise. U.S. government debt. I mean, we could go on and on and on. But essentially what we're seeing here is maybe there's a crack in the consumer. So Nike, again, keep an eye on that. You can see I have technical levels here. You can find these on Verified Investing on Twitter, by the way. Uh, Lululemon falls 13% pre-market after forecasting annual revenue growth below expectations. So again, a consumer issue potentially here. Demand for their premium products is falling. And again, we have some technical levels down here that we'll go over on the chart. All right, so before we get into the charts, let's do our spin here for the winner from yesterday. As always, guys, Guys, remember, this is from the wheel of appreciation because from me to you, from Verified Investing to you, and from our sponsors to you, we appreciate each and every one of you guys. Again, you don't have to spend your time here with us, but you're choosing to, and we appreciate that. So let's rock and roll. Who's the winner today? Let's find out. Here's the wheel spinning. It's going through all of the people that commented on YouTube or on Twitter, and we'll have a winner in just one second. So here we go. All right, at Volve. 
Rianus. And again, I might be saying that incorrectly, but there it is. There's your winner for today. And again, they won. I believe if I look over here, it was Range Trading Mastery Course. So again, the Range Trading Mastery Course, I think it's about $300 to $400 course here. And again, reach out to Lawton at Verified Investing. You should see it below on the bottom of the screen to claim your prize. And in just a little bit, we're going to be doing another spin. Maybe someone will win silver. Maybe they'll win the winning trader series. Maybe they'll win a year of, of premium at TradingView or at some other company. But all right, so we have that, guys. So thank you so much for being with us on that mission of appreciation. So let's get into the S&P here. What do we have on the S&P? Well, we know we didn't confirm below this wedge pattern. And therefore, remember, and again, let me draw this out. I think this education is really priceless. It's helped me in trading. I hope it helps you guys. When you have a line like this, and you are above it, right? If you go below it, you break it, but again, until you confirm, you do not have a confirmed breakdown. So if this hasn't confirmed, which is what happened right here, then you have to be aware that this line now, so essentially this line here, when you break below it, it does not become major resistance. So support, when you're hitting on it, when you break support, it becomes resistance, but it doesn't become major resistance until you confirm. So in this situation, we broke below, we never confirmed, and look at how easy it was for the market to get back inside of that range. Now, let's be fair, this wedge range is so tight that at some point, I'm guessing in the next week, we have to break one way or the other and we're gonna eventually confirm. So let's watch it closely. I did see the S&P futures were down a little bit today and there are some concerns out there. I voiced yesterday in trading the close that again, the dollar rebound is very interesting about whether or not the rally off the Fed is going to be a lasting rally or a fake out. Okay. So that's one of the things to think about right here. Let's watch today's price action. Maybe we come down and close below it on a Friday, and then maybe we have a chance to confirm a breakdown on Monday. We'll watch and I'll update you guys, of course. All right, going to the QQQ, we know that this pattern, this one absolutely did confirm. And what you can see here is if we zoom in on this, right? If we zoom in on this price action, we can clearly see when it confirmed, here's your break below, here's your confirming candle. Over here at close below, didn't confirm. But look at how when you went back up, this is now major resistance and it rejected price back down. Now you've gone up again. We know that this is still major resistance. If it touches, you likely will have major resistance there and it'll get rejected. Again, that's likely. Now, why didn't it get there on the gap up yesterday or why didn't it rally to the upside? Well, the answer is actually pretty simple here. If we look at this high here, right? This high literally is that high as well right there. So you had a, what's called a double top in the chart, which rejected price right here and drove it back down on the charts versus pushing up into this level here. So again, interesting to just take note that you had a nice little intra or daily double top on the QQQ chart, which is the NASDAQ 100. All right, going into a couple other charts here, I do want to touch base on the NVIDIA chart. Yesterday I said, listen, this is an inside channel bearish pattern on NVIDIA unless we break above this line here. Look at what yesterday did. We basically kissed the line and it got rejected. Today I think NVIDIA is down a couple bucks pre-market, nothing too crazy, but for me, this is what I do. I just look at the chart and I don't try to guess. I don't say, oh, well, maybe it'll break out, maybe it'll break down. It's like, dude, this is the pattern. I know my patterns, this is what I study. And again, it's all about probabilities. And as long as I have this pattern, I'm going with the analysis that eventually we break lower. If we get above here, then you know what? Then that cancels it out and we have to reevaluate. Still would be slightly bearish because of the engulfing candle here, but still, you wanna see if the pattern can form. Right now, this is a bearish engulfing candle right here with a bear flag. That's pretty darn bearish as long as you stay within that metric line, the, the channel right there. All right, let's look at Tesla. Tesla falling pre-market. We mentioned that they're cutting output of their EVs in China. So again, the stock falling pre-market. We are starting to bounce back just a little bit, but let's take a look at the chart and see exactly what we have here. So first and foremost, when I go to the daily chart, what do we have? Well, we have a chart that's already been discounted pretty heavily. So if you look at this, right? I mean, we number one, we're in this massive wedge pattern, which is really remarkable, but it should also be scary because at some point, again, you're either going to break down and look at this. If you break down, this is the crazy thing. 
you know, a breakdown here, you're going all the way down towards the low from 2020, late 2022, which I think was around $120. So again, even close to $100 there. So this is a huge level longer term, just like this would be too. Now, is there a determining factor about which way this will break out? What I do is I look at it and I say, is there a bearish pattern development? Is there a bullish pattern development? And honestly, I don't really see much. I don't see a lot in this chart pattern. So for me, I would just be honest and say, Right now, it's in a wedge pattern. I'm going to leave it be on, on a bigger time frame. Now, it doesn't mean there's not day trading opportunities or quick swing trades, which we'll go over. But on a bigger time frame, if I'm a, a longer term investor, I would just be kind of sitting back. Now, if you wanted to, you could always buy here and then have a tight stop or you wait for this lower level. On the other hand, if we go up here and you break out, then you get a big move to the upside. Now, Let's talk some day trading opportunities, which obviously, again, are, are subject to change as the market is fluid. And one of the things that we see here is we have a low pivot. There's a gap fill right at this 163.60 level right down here. That'll be an interesting level. I'll be watching that today. And if it breaks that, you have your double bottom right around 160.5. So those are two levels on the charts as a day trader that I will be focusing in. Now, if it gets below 160, there's not a whole lot below that at that point. So that, again, would be kind of a step away from the potential trading opportunity. FedEx. FedEx, huge earnings, guys. One of the, really the only stock that's having a monster move today that's a big player. Again, their earnings were very, very solid um, versus what we saw from Lululemon and Nike, which we'll look at those charts in just a second. But big move up. It is fading a little bit here, but not a whole lot. So it's still holding its gains, trading at 292.70 or so. If we flip over to the daily chart to start getting some of our bearings here, there is a standout level here. There's a gap fill, monster gap fill right here. Look at the size of that gap, guys. Huge gap. Yeah. So that level right here is at around 280, right? So right off the bat, you have to say to yourself, are we above that level or not? And let me just look at the chart again, pre-market, we're at 292. So right away as a technician, you say, wait a minute, we're above that level already, so that's not a tradable level, right? If you're looking to short resistance and you're already above resistance, you step back and you say, okay, now what do we have to do? We actually have to look for a higher level. So what we do is we zoom out to a bigger time frame. We go further back, right? Even further back. And if we go back far enough, look at this, guys. There's another sideways consolidation. And this is, again, I'm walking you through the steps that I take when I'm analyzing these things, determining what the levels would be. But there's a gap over here. And see all this sideways chop right here? That's telling me there's going to be resistance there. And what price is that at? That's basically at 297 give or take about $300. And again, I would say that that level there is a level I'll be watching. Now, being so close to the even number, I might wait for a pierce of the even number. But if it pierces 300, there's a decent shot that I would be looking to short it today at that level as a day tradable opportunity. Now, if it gets through that, you have a double top up here, which is around 320. I doubt it gets up to 320 today, but that would be your major double top level on the chart. And again, we're going back to 2021 highs here to find that pivot point. So again, 297 to 300, and then potentially if it gets through that, you got a significant amount of upside going forward. All right, next up, let's look at the Nike chart. So if we flip over to Nike here, bear with me as I flip over to the 10 minute chart so we can take a look at the price action pre-market. And we go here and look at this drop on Nike. Now Nike's been already beaten down and it's going lower, but this is the kicker. It's actually into some very intriguing levels pre-market. So you could see initially Nike rallied and then it dumped out. This was when they got the guidance. The guidance was very, very weak. And it's gone sideways in the pre-market since then, trading at $94.30. Same sort of step process. All right, say, okay, intraday, we know it's down. Let's flip over to the daily chart. The daily chart has some interesting things here. We have this big wedge pattern. Right? So if we zoom out, look at how long ago this line comes from. Right, So you're talking about a level from 2017 right here. Bear with me as I get my drawing tool back. So again, 2017 lows here to the, the COVID low, to this low, to this low. And that's right at around $92 and change. All right, So 92 is that low level. In addition, if by chance it pierces that level. So we know we have a level around 92, give or take, but if it pierces that level and we zoom in, we can see there's a gap fill, 
All right, so let's look right here. See this gap right here from where it closed here one day and then it opened all the way up here the next day? That's a gap fill, and we have a line there that if we stretch it across, it goes to about just below 90. So what I'm doing here is now I'm isolating down a range between 92 and about $90 that there should be significant support on Nike. All right, so again, that's going to be a very intriguing level for me, at least in the live day trading room today, to be isolating down and potentially trading. Next up, let's look at Lululemon. Look at this drop on Lulu, guys. From a close yesterday around $480, trading at $416. Yes, there are some technical levels here as well. And if we go quickly here to our daily chart, we can see again that it was kind of consolidating here sideways and then breaking down. And there's a couple levels. Now, you have, I have a lower level. This is more of a swing trade line because it goes back a far distance. But we're, we're not even trading close to this level at 350. But really where we are, we're getting close to 400. And I want to show you this. So one of the things I look for is a lot of sideways chop in a stock. And what we have here on Lulu, if we draw a trend line across, look at all the pivot points along the way here, right? So you have here, you have here, you have here, you have here, all of these, right? And right there even, and notice how it broke above, retraced, and then took off. That's telling me this area is a big level. The approximate price on this is 390. So 390, give or take, a lot of major technical support. That'll be something that I look for today. It's still about $26 away from that level, but this stock is pretty thin, so it can move very, very quickly. And remember, day trading carries a lot of risk with it, folks. It does. And so you don't do this if you're, if you're you know, number one, you never invest with money you can't afford to lose. And number two, you always just want to be aware that there is inherent risk with trading. If you, especially if you don't know what you're doing. All right, um, quickly, just a couple more charts, and then we're going to spin the wheel of appreciation to see what the next winner will be or will receive on Monday's game plan. But right here, what we have is, look at the drop yesterday on Apple, big drop. It almost looks to me like you got a little head and shoulder pattern developing here, right? It looks like that at least, where if we break 170, number one, you will have some major support around 155, but what we can do is we can do a measured move here from the high here, and that would replicate all the way down, honestly, probably down to about 140 to 135 as a target zone. So again, think about that. Apple, the biggest company by market cap, and if this head and shoulders plays out to target, you're talking about a move from 200 back to 135. Now, I'll be honest, thank goodness for NVIDIA because if this stock was still the leader and the most talked about and one of the biggest players, then the markets would be back down a lot, lot more. But NVIDIA and some of these other players have kind of taken up the slack of Apple already coming down from 200 back to $171, all right? So just something to keep an eye on. I'm watching like a hawk this 170-ish level to see if that level breaks. Then I think you go quickly to 155, and if 155 breaks, Watch out below, 140 to 135 could be in store. Looking at the Russell real quick, this is the small cap Russell 2000. We still have the breakout here. It's been generally trending higher. I still think that there'll be a rotation further out of large caps and into the Russell. So I would maintain that bullish bias on the Russell, the IWM. Um, once we get to double top, I think you got to be careful. But in the very least, that still has a little bit of, of room to run there before we get into that. All right, to the wheel of appreciation. All right, guys, so again, like I said, these sponsors here, whether it's um, Kitco, and again, I bought gold from Kitco myself. They're awesome. Trading View, um, again, we have NordVPN, a year there. Luxalgo, a, a one-year membership there. Um, these, again, I, I just want to give a shout-out to the sponsors because – you know, they understand that they didn't have to give this and put these on the wheel in addition to the sponsorship that they do for us, and they did, and I appreciate that absolutely. So thank them. Uh, we'll all thank them. All right, here we go on the spin, guys. What's the winner going to receive? Let's see. Oh, yes. One year membership of Lux Algo. That's a good one, guys. That is a big one. So, one year membership of Lux Algo. And that will be for the winner that's drawn on Monday during the game plan. Very cool, right there. Now, one thing to note, guys, there's a chat box that a lot of you guys are probably chatting in. Those comments don't count because we don't have those afterwards. We can't pull those from, from this, right? So, so again, it's, it's after this stream, I want you to comment below, either on Twitter or on YouTube.
YouTube on the Verified Investing. Remember, you have to be a follower of Verified Investing. We double check once the winner's announced to make sure that they are. But I want you to comment today going, or it can be over the weekend, comment what got you interested in trading and investing. What was the, what was the key catalyst? Was it, did someone show you something? Did someone pique your interest by saying, wow, I just made a lot of money? I'd love, and by the way, I've been reading some of these responses, like, like, this, like your best trades. Freaking awesome, man. I just, I love it. it. It's amazing, and I congratulate you guys for some of these trades. And way bigger gains than I've ever made individually on a trade, uh, percentage-wise, so very, very cool. But again, comment again what got you intrigued enough to start getting into trading and investing, and we'll draw that winner on Monday. All right, let's go right over here, guys, right to crypto. Uh-oh. We might not have our screen up here, in which case we'll just do it from the other screen. All right, for now, follow me over here. Let's go back here. We're going to get into Bitcoin. And again, as we go into BTC USD, uh, let's see what we got here. So I do have some levels to talk about on Bitcoin. Now, there is a troubling thing with Bitcoin. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear it. I'm just trying to be honest and like be straight with you guys. So do I love Bitcoin long term? Yes, I do. A hundred percent. But one of the things that concerns me is that on the Fed day, the stock market had a big up day and Bitcoin had a big up day. Yesterday, the stock market was up about a third to a half percent. So it continued its rally and Bitcoin pulled back about almost a, almost a half of the move. I don't like seeing that because if, if again, if it dr gets driven up with the Fed, why didn't it continue with the stock market the day after? Now, you could maybe say the dollar was strong, so maybe that played a little bit of a role, but the dollar didn't have that big of a move, to be honest, where I would have thought it would have caused that type of move. Now, again, Bitcoin's coming back in here, so what we want to pay attention to is we want to watch this low now. Right, very obvious technical level. It's right around 60,800 ish or so. So, again, if we do come back in here, does this level hold here? If it doesn't, it opens. Look at this. There's really no sideways chop or major high pivot in this range here below these levels. All right. So, again, that would be something that if we crack and break below this level, and technically you need to confirm, that'll give you the solidification that we will break lower. But again, that's going to be something to watch. Now, it might come back down and go like that, in which case that's fine. That's fine. But I just want to make you aware that the price action yesterday was not the ideal price action. If the stock market was up, you'd like to see Bitcoin participating, risk assets, risk on type situation. Now, again, on the bigger time frames, we want to see that weekly close above 69.2. That would be a big signal as well that the bull market run starts up again. But right now, we're watching. We have this level here at 69.2 and this one at 60,800. Which way do we go? Let's watch over the next couple days. Okay, we're going to follow me over here. We got our charts fixed now, which is fantastic. I appreciate that, guys. So we're going to just quickly look at Cardano. I love this because, again, it just shows you the power of trend lines. Remember Cardano, I gave this to you guys earlier this week. We talked about this trend line being a good buying opportunity. Look at how price fell and got a bounce. Now again, as a swing trader, that's all I really care about, right? It's not like like if you're a, if you're a bull long term, you're looking for this to obviously go like that, but as a trader, I'm just trying to isolate down where the supports and resistance are. Essentially where we're going to bounce or where we're going to pull back from. Now you can see we're starting to roll over a little here. So the same thing on Cardano, you're basically watching this trend line, right? This trend line, you need to see, if you're a bull, you gotta have it hold that. Because look at how long this trend line goes back. If this trend line gets broken and confirmed below, that's where you start to see more significant downside. I mean, there'll be some support in this range right in here, but ultimately that's a long-term trend line. When long-term trend lines are broken, the moves are bigger versus if it's just a really short-term trend line, right? It's, it's not as big of a move. Okay, next up, let's quickly look at Avalanche. Avalanche, I want you to show you guys this. So look at this channel and then look at the trend line. So the channel's in orange, right? We basically take down here, through here, through here and through here. And then what we do is we stretch a perfectly parallel line up to here. Okay? And look at how it gave us the top. So the first thing we do is we say, okay, we're in a channel. So in general, any sort of pullback here would be a buying opportunity versus any move up here would be a shortable opportunity. Now, there is a secondary trend line I'm watching. If we look at this, we look at this area here through here, right through this high here, here, 
right? And we broke above. Look at how all the tails on this keep on piercing this line. And so for me, on a short-term basis, what it tells you is you are into support right here at around $52. And as long as that holds, maybe we even bounce back up ahead of a breakdown. But if this line at 52 breaks, you're likely headed back to $40. And so again, Basically, as you're watching this, you're just watching this pivot point around $52 to see which way it goes. If it holds above 52, maintain a neutral to bullish bias. If it breaks 52, you're likely headed back towards the 40, 41-ish area there on the chart. Looking at gold real quick, guys. Gold, again, um, continues to kind of have a little weakness. Now, I want to show you something, and this is one of the reasons. Wow, it's getting late. Holy cow. Okay, so gold overall... Uh, even though it had a big reversal, I actually think it's bullish, and I'm going to tell you why. So yesterday we saw a massive move up on the uh, uh, on the dollar that eclipsed. Like, look at this. Look at the move on the dollar. Right, the dollar is is right now having surged up. Now remember, gold goes inverse to the dollar. So this is now above the Fed move down, but the tricky thing, so basically what this would imply is that gold should be lower than it was a couple days ago. In the, in the difference maker here, if we flip back to gold, gold did not drop that much. So yes, it came off of this high, but look, it's not below where we were a few days ago, meaning it's holding, it's getting money flow into it. So yes, it's pulled back, but considering the dollar move, it's actually holding its gains very nicely. All right, guys, again, I don't have a whole lot of time left. Oil is moving up just a tiny bit here. I still think this is bullish to that $85 target zone, so I will maintain that. And lastly, guys, take a look at this. This is your wedge pattern on Nat Gas. We see we are dropping on Nat Gas, so we're going to test this. It's around 176, 177. Let's watch closely. Can it hold, and which way do we break out of it? If we break down, honestly, we could go back down to these lows down here if we can break out here then we you know needless to say we have a move there minimum but again very coming to the head of the wedge pattern so let's watch and see all right guys let's go here real quick there we go all right so you guys, as always, go have a great weekend. Go relax a little bit. I will be here guiding you on Monday morning at 9 a.m. as always. So again, guys, thank you so much, and we'll get going. Have a good one, guys. Take care.